China's electric vehicle sales and Europe's electric vehicle sales in the month of September have just been revealed. We now know the winners and losers in those two markets. Let's compare the two. Let's have a look at the future. This is the future of the automotive industry, my friends. Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name's Sam Evans and I'm coming to you from Melbourne, Australia. Wonderful to have so many new subscribers. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. I know a lot of you have already been watching the channel, just hadn't already subscribed. So it's really good to see you guys. Come on and subscribe. We're about to hit 100,000. Let's have a huge party. No, I'm joking. It's just going to be another day, but it's going to be a good day. As every day is, well, almost every day is a good day on planet Earth for me. Yesterday was a mental day. Absolutely everything you can possibly think of went wrong. Well, not everything you can possibly think of. I'm still alive. My kids are alive. That's good. Maybe not everything, but it felt like the world imploded for me yesterday. I'll tell you guys what happened another time when, um, when it's less painful to talk about. Now, this information here is going to be pretty painful for some automakers to see. Chinese electric car sales, 26% fully electric, 35% have a plug. That means, yes, plug-in hybrid sales are growing in China, thanks to one company, BYD. People don't really buy plug-in hybrids if they're not from BYD. I mean, they buy a few Lee autos, but that's a pretty small percentage of the market. As you can see, EVs, right? 26% market share. A lot of analysts now are saying we're going to hit more than 40% electric vehicle market share next year in China, which is crazy. That's ballistic because what's that mean, right? The Chinese auto market, it's 24 million cars a year. That means we're going to see more than 10 million electric vehicle sales in 2023 in China alone. Plug-in vehicles are growing, like I said, in China. They're up 78% year over year in September. Bit different to the European auto market. Let's get to that in a second. In September, plug-in hybrids and electric cars, 636,000 were delivered in China. That's a new record. Plug-ins increased 148% year over year reaching 161,000 sales. But these plug-in vehicles in China, they're not the ridiculous like Mercedes vehicles that you would have seen recently come out with a six kilowatt hour battery packs, like the size of battery pack that you'd probably put in an electric bicycle. No, I'm exaggerating there. But seriously, really tiny packs with like 12 kilometers of range. The Chinese would just laugh at that. In China, the Chinese are buying plug-in hybrids with 30 plus kilowatt hour battery packs, giving them, you know, at least absolute minimum 100 kilometers of range but you're looking at the plug-in hybrids that are selling well have more than 200 kilometers of range less than that people are not really interested now electric cars increased by 62 percent year over year in china we're talking about fully electric cars here to 475,000 units fully electric cars 475,000 were delivered in china in september Sharewise, with September's record performance, Clean Technica says plug-in vehicles hit 35% market share. Fully electrics, 26%. So Jose from Clean Technica claims that if electrification continues at the current pace we're at, in a year from now, the plug-in market share would be 45%. Not the 40% that I talked about before, but 45%. And the prediction now is that EVs will have more than 50% market share in China by 2025. The only possible result that that can have for the auto market in the world's largest auto market is that um, legacy auto will basically lose millions of sales in China. There's no other possible outcome. Why is that? Well, that's because these are the top 20 best-selling plug-in vehicles in China. And yeah, almost none of them uh from legacy auto manufacturers tesla model y was in first second byd third wuling hongwan mini ev now you could say that that's from a legacy auto manufacturer because general motors owns 33 percent of that tri venture so there's your pretty much one exception to my rule fourth place byd fifth place byd sixth place tesla of course that tesla is made in china though then you've got another BYD, then another BYD, then another BYD, then a GAC, then a GAC, then a Hoson, then a Lee, then a Chang'an, then a Cherry, then a BYD, then a Cherry, then a Zika, then a BYD, then a Geely. So yeah, like I said, not a single one of those is from a legacy auto manufacturer, unless, like I said, you want to claim GM's 33%. And yeah, then you'd have a point. That's the future of the auto market in China. Now, yeah, it's not entirely the future. It's going to change a little bit, but not much. 
Not much. BYD and Tesla will be battling it out. And frankly, I don't believe Neo and Xpeng are going to be a huge part of that future. Unfortunately, this year has been a big momentum changer for those two companies. Who knows what's going on there? But I've, yeah, I've just made some big changes. I've got a new video coming out on my thoughts on Neo and Xpeng and what is going on at those two automakers. And as a result, the actions that I've taken. Now, even more important than September sales are sales from January to September of 2022. Who's leading that list? Well, the world's cheapest electric vehicle, the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV is number one. So well done General Motors, you're leading the world in electrification. Those of you who've been watching the channel for a while will get that joke. Number two, BYD with the Song Plus, combination of electric versions and plug-in hybrids, BYD Chin Plus, combination of electric versions and plug-in hybrids. And then in fourth place is the Tesla Model Y with 219,000 deliveries in China. Fifth, the BYD Han with 179,000. By the way, apparently that's the vehicle that has more complaints than any other vehicle manufactured in China this year, which shocked me. You guys know I've bought a BYD. I think I'm meant to get that in a couple of days, so that'll be cool. But I'm a little bit alarmed by those massive number of complaints that are, it's actually like 20 times more complaints for BYD cars in China than for Teslas. The media would have you think that's the opposite, wouldn't they? I mean, look at the Chinese media. Oh, people are complaining about Tesla, complaining about, they're actually not. There's only two complaints on average. Tesla's cars have had received less complaints than any other vehicle manufacturer in China. In fact, than any other vehicle manufacturer for the last five years in China. That's a pretty good indication of the quality of the vehicles that they're manufacturing in China. So you've got to say kudos to you guys in China doing such a good job on the quality of those Tesla vehicles being made there at Gigafactory Shanghai. And hey, the other benefit you guys have got now is, especially if you live in Shanghai, a place of 30 million people, you can buy a Model Y now, including Shanghai subsidies for 35,000 US dollars. That's a deal. That's a damn good deal. Tesla still makes a profit on that, a pretty good profit on that. Do Tesla's competitors make a profit? BYD, yes. Neo and Xpeng, no. Next, BYD Dolphin, then you've got the BYD Yen Plus, then you've got the Tesla Model 3, which is actually a lot less. It's 99,944 compared to the Model Y with 219,405. You can really see what Elon did predict there that the Model Y would definitely well and truly usurp Model 3 sales worldwide. Next GAC, next Cherry, next Lee, next GAC Aon, next Hoson Nita, next Chang'an Benny Volkswagen ID4. Then the Great Wall or a Good Cat, followed by the Xpeng P7 and the Leap Motor T03. So as you can see, very surprisingly, no Neo vehicles here, no Xpengs other than the P7 in 19th place, and the only legacy, the only true legacy auto manufacturer here is the Volkswagen ID4 in 17th place. But the ID4, by the way, it is manufactured by Volkswagen's joint venture partner. So of course, Volkswagen just owned 50% of that production. In China, important to keep this context, domestic brands keep on gaining ground. The sales of domestic branded vehicles are up 42% year on year to 1.2 million vehicles so far. That's around 50% of the passenger car market versus only 46% a year ago and 37% the year before that. Over the first nine months of 2022, Chinese brands are up 27% to 8.2 million and a 48% market share. The best selling manufacturer of vehicles this year though is still Volkswagen in China, even though it has lost a lot of market share. Second is BYD and in third place is Toyota. Now surprisingly, Tesla is up 10 spots to number six in China. Now let's move on to the European market. In September, 16% of new car sales were fully electric and 24% were either plug-in hybrids or fully electric. However, in Europe, plug-in hybrids are losing ground. They're becoming less popular. Electric vehicles grew 16% year over year in September, but fully electric vehicles were up 26%. Plug-in hybrids continue to drop. Of all plug-in vehicle sales, 66% of them were fully electric. That's an increase over the 59% yearly average. Now, Clean Technica says, with greater electric vehicle availability in the coming months and more stringent incentives for plug-in hybrids next year, in many European countries, you can expect this ratio to continue improving on the electric vehicle side. Biggest highlight though last month was the Tesla Model Y took leadership position not only in the plug-in category, but overall. Over all models, 
Tesla's Model Y was the number one selling vehicle in Europe in September, in both China and Europe, in fact. And also, it was the number one selling vehicle in more than 10 countries worldwide in September. So what was in second place? Well, in terms of plug-in vehicles, Model Y number one, Model 3 was number two, Volkswagen ID4 was number three, and the Volkswagen ID4, for context, guys, deliveries, 6,717. Tesla Model Y, 29,600. There's an enormous gap between first and third place. Fourth, Fiat 500e. Fifth, the Dacia Spring. Then you got the Skoda Enyaq, followed by the Renault Megane EV. That's Renault's new electric vehicle. Then you've got the Kia Nero EV. I did a review on that. I'll put a link in the description below. Then you've got the ID3, followed by the Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid, followed by the Peugeot 208 EV, the Hyundai Kona EV, the Cooper Born, the Volvo XC40, the Mini Cooper EV, the Audi Q4 e-tron, and then you can see the MG5 EV, which, by the way, Top Gear gave 9 out of 10. Matt Watson from Carwell said it was the best vehicle he's driven, period, for the entire year. So the MG4, I think that's going to do really well in Europe, as long as MG can make enough of them. They just need to up that production number because they're coming to Australia. So please, Europe, don't buy all the MG4s. We need some here in Australia. So as you can see, this market here is very different to China, but some of those vehicles that are on sale in China actually just went on sale in Europe, in particular BYD electric cars, which I think are gonna do really well in Europe. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Even more important than these numbers though are the yearly numbers so far. Tesla Model Y is still in first place in terms of electric vehicles with 83,600 deliveries and 5% market share. Model 3 is in second place with 55,000 and 3.3% market share. In third place is the Fiat 500e, which isn't too far behind the Model 3 with 47,000 deliveries. Then in fourth, the Volkswagen ID4, followed by the Skoda Enyaq, Peugeot 208, the Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid, the Dacia Spring, the Hyundai Kona EV, and the Kira here, Nero EV. As you can see of those top 10 there, all of those are electric cars, fully electric cars, except for the Ford Cougar plug-in hybrid. Now the best ranking BMW was actually a plug-in hybrid, the plug-in hybrid BMW 3 Series with 23,000 deliveries. And the Kia EV6 was in 18th place with 22,317, or almost exactly 25% the number of Tesla Model Ys delivered, which is surprising to me actually. I would have thought the gap would have been bigger, and I think it will be over the next 12 months as, of course, Tesla continues to ramp production of the Model Y at the factory there in Berlin. So those are the numbers for China and in Europe as well for 2022 from January to September. Thank you to you guys at Clean Technica for that information. And of course, to bestsellingcarsblog.com. Those guys have some really good information on global car sales statistics. I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Now let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Who are going to be the winners and losers here? I think it's pretty clear. Tesla is doing very, very well. BYD also the same. Outstanding results from those two car companies. And clearly, I mean, General Motors, kudos to you guys. You guys are absolutely crushing it. The Wheeling Hong Wan Mini EV, world's best-selling electric car. Now it was, it's not, it's not really. World's um, best-selling $5,000 electric car.